Hi, I'm Mike with Utastic here again at SCNA. This morning I'm sitting down with Mike Clement, who runs the Utah uh, Software Craftsmanship Group. You found, well, you founded the group. Um, thanks for sitting down with me. What are you guys doing out in Utah with uh, Software Craftsmanship? Um, so we started the group in February 2011. Um, it was me and two other guys. The two other guys have become less uh, involved with the group since mm -hmm. then, but um, I just uh, saw that there were other communities being um, organized in different cities, and so what I did is on the main software craftsmanship mailing list, I sent out a, is anybody else in Utah, is anybody doing right. anything like this? And found uh, three or four other like-minded people that were interested in starting up a community, and yeah. so we kind of took that core and, and built on it. Are you in Salt Lake? Or? Um, so, the for those not familiar with Utah, uh, there's... Uh, Salt Lake County and there's uh, the Salt Lake Valley and the Utah Valley that are kind of adjacent to each other mm -hmm. and um, that area along there including Davis County is known as the Wasatch Front and so okay. um, it's kind of a big metropolitan area big you know a lot of suburbs and stuff mm -hmm. like that so we uh, meet between Salt Lake and Utah County is kind of in the middle so that we can draw from both areas but it, it, it's a city area because I've, I've noticed that that does influence <coughs> Um, attendance and the way the community works is whether or not it's a suburban versus like a sprawling area or a, or a centralized metropolitan area. Is that it's a sprawling area. Okay. I mean, we're talking um, people come from probably 40, 50 minutes south of where, like they live 40, mm -hmm. 50, 50 minutes south of where the meeting is and some people come as far as an <coughs> hour from the north. Oh, wow. So, so um, you're pulling people from a pretty large area. Yeah. We have considered doing um, two groups, splitting it apart, um, but we haven't quite reached the critical mass I think is necessary to yeah. be able to split the group and have them both succeed independently. Um, so how many are you seeing at a meeting? Kind of. Um, so over the last couple of months, we've actually seen a pretty big uptick in the number of people coming. Um, we're sitting like uh, 20, 25 people. That's good for a, for a non-centralized metropolitan area. Yeah. Well, well we're using a, a, an area that's uh, a location that's used for a lot of other user groups. Mm -hmm. So um, people are used to traveling at least a little bit. Oh, so it's already kind of an established area. People know that that's the area you go for user groups. Yeah, we use, um, we're currently sponsored by Newmont University who hosts the, uh, the, the site. They're a university that's uh, focuses on computer science degrees mm -hmm. and they can kind of compress it into two and a half years. Okay. Anyway, so they, they sponsor a lot of community events um, and like the Donut user group meets there. Mm -hmm. I think the Ruby user group used to meet there. I don't know if they still do or not. Like Utah Code Camp has been hosted there. So it, it's a place where um, people are pretty familiar with. Okay. So, so they know, <laughs> so that I'm sure that helps with also letting people know about the group or is that, in, it, do you think that the fact that you're in this area that's already known for having groups has helped you with promoting your group or has it? It's made it easier to tell people where it is, right? Okay. Because people already know the location. Um, but it's, but interestingly enough, next summer the, they're moving sites to downtown Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. um, currently they're probably about 15, 20 minutes south of Salt Lake. And so we're trying to decide what we're going to do yeah. going forward. Starting well, they stay there just out of history or move to the new location? Well, they're going to close that location. Oh. So it's whether or not we move with them or we find somewhere else in a similar location just because it's kind of central mm -hmm. or we split the group or whatever. We'll yeah. to make sure. well, kind of dislaying that decision as long as possible. And I, so I'm, I'm sorry, I just drew a blank on a question I wanted to ask. That <laughs> happens sometimes. Uh, but what I was really trying to get at is, you said that there's, there is a body of user groups that, were, that are in that area. Um, have you done any cross, uh, cross meetings with them? Any, like, oh, you're talking about Ruby, we want to do something about testing on Ruby. Can we do a cross meeting? Um, we haven't really yet. Um, I come from the .NET community, mm -hmm. and so interestingly enough, I guess a lot of the initial people that that joined the group were mm -hmm. from the .NET community people that I, I knew. Um, we struggled for probably six to ten months early on. Like mm -hmm. every meeting, it was like at, at the beginning of the meeting, we do a check in and we would say, you know, what's your name, where do you work, mm -hmm. what your primary language, and then we'd come up with some goofy question like, what's your favorite candy bar or something, right? Yeah. And, nice um, breaker. Yeah. And so, um, 
consistently it was like C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, dot net, C sharp. And um, occasionally you have somebody from the Ruby community show up or somebody right. that did something else. And but it was it was really hard because we were trying to be a, a polyglot group. We wouldn't right. want to be <clears throat> homogenous. And so um, over the last probably six months or so, we've started to be able to pull in more people because um, mm -hmm. we have some guys who cross over um, between like the .NET world and like the JavaScript world and the Ruby right. world. And so um, we've, and we've tried to coordinate, um, maybe not directly, but at least tried to get a lance before we started um, to get a landscape of where all the meetings were in the month. Right. To kind of make sure we were on a free night. Yeah, so you weren't competing. Right. Because uh, early on we were competing with the Ruby user group, and that basically said no Ruby people were going to come. Right. And so we, we moved it, I think, twice before we settled on the night that's actually going to that's have you, for us for but you, So you looked at the calendar and you tried to figure, have you spoken with any of the other user group leaders? Um, I've talked to the .NET user group, and we've had different people within <coughs> the group um, kind of proxies or circuits, I guess, yeah. to go talk to the groups, the communities that they're a part of. Mm -hmm. um, but I haven't reached out specifically. Like, I've um, posted stuff on their groups and stuff right. to kind of get... Do you, use, um, do you use Meetup? How do you, how do you share your... How do you share your meetings? How do people know when a Utah SC meeting is? Um, so we just use a Google group. Oh, okay. um, I'm talking to Sandro yesterday. It yeah. sounds like we maybe ought to try something <laughs> more. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, I don't know, Meetup, because most of the, the user groups in Utah predate Meetup and all of that right. stuff, um, they all kind of have their own sites and are kind of, it's not terribly unified, right? There are a couple, there is a site, I think, that, that tracks a lot of the um, activities. There's Utah Geek Events, which is trying to be kind of a hub. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, we haven't used Meetup. Maybe we should. So we just use Mind Google. you writing something down? Utah Geek Events? I'm going to check them out. <clears throat> um, yeah, they, they uh, are a group that, um, the core group started, was the one that was organizing, or is organizing Utah Code Camp. And then they organize a sequel Saturday, and they've kind of tried to be, um, try to help organize different other communities. So they, they they kind of act between the different groups and say, okay, let's this is let's try to work out a schedule. And um, well, it's more they're more about putting on events as opposed to user groups. Oh, okay. okay. So like annual type events, conference, you know, mini conference type stuff. Um, okay. But they're community organized. Again, one of the challenges they've had is that. They come from the .NET community right. and trying to reach out to, um, you know, the Java guys and the Ruby guys and just trying to pull the community together. It's been somewhat difficult because there is, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, there's a little bit. There's a little different cultures. It's just different cultures, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to stop. Okay. Appreciate Great. it. Thanks, Mike.